What's up everybody, this is Brock Bailey and today I want to go over how I color grade my films and kind of go over the basics of color grading. This is going to be a two part series. This part will be just the basics of color correction in Final Cut Pro and then the next part will be more in depth where we start getting into LUTs, curves and all that kind of stuff. So let's go to our video scopes up here. And I like using RGB Parade, but there are other versions too. If you like the histogram, there's the histogram. If you like vector scopes, there's some vector scopes. If you like waveforms, there's some waveforms. And um, you can line it up however you want. But I like using the RGB Parade the best because it allows me to see my white balance, my highlights, my shadows, my midtones. So up here around 100, that's where you want to keep your highlights. Down here at zero is where you kind of want to keep your shadows and your midtones around 50. Um, so that's kind of how I do this. So this is a basic color correction. So we're going to go over here to this color tab. We're going to add a color board. And that will bring up our exposure, our saturations, and our color board. So um, let's first go to the exposure. Like I said, maybe we can do some highlights a little bit. And then we can bring down our shadows quite a bit to give it a more contrasty look. I kind of overall like that. Um, maybe midtones will bump up the midtones a tiny bit. We'll add some saturation. This is overall saturation. If you want to add saturation in the shadows, it's this one, midtones right here, and highlights over here. I pretty much start over here on the overall, and then I tune from there. Um, so this saturation looks pretty good now. Um, it gives me a very nice overall look to start my main color grade, which will go in the second part of the series. Um, so let's go back to the clip. So here's just your basic color correction color board. So here it was before, and here it was after. I think overall it looks pretty dang good. Um, but yeah, that's a great basic color correction. Some of this stuff right here is shadows. This is more from the darker tones, kind of it's looking like it's over these right here. Um, Cause this, all you how, also how you read the color grade is from left to right of your screen. So this over here is coming from these shadows right over in this little cliff area. So that's not too bad. I'm mainly concerned more about the middle part of this. So I'm looking to bring these down um, to the con to the contrast that I like. So let's go back. We can actually bring down a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, I like that a little bit much better. It gives me a nice base um, to our color grade. Actually, let's bring it up a tiny bit. Okay, I kind of like that. So that's some a drone kind of thing. And same thing for here. So now that I showed you, we'll do this one real quick. Um, this is another drone shot. Um, so we're going to do our exposure over here. We need to bring up our highlights a tiny bit. We need to bring our shadows down. Remember, looking from left to right, that looks really good right there. Saturation, we'll bring it up to your desire. So this is overall looks good. And then we'll go back to the, the clip here, and we'll see before and after. That's before, and that's after. Let's go to a GoPro shot. This is a GoPro shot, shot on the GoPro Hero 6. Um, so here we can see this is a, it's pretty bright up here. Um, the mids are pretty high. So we're going to go, let's add a basic color correction. Um, we're going to bring the highlights down about right there. Let's bring the shadows down to where we want it. I kind of like stuff more contrasty. Um, so I like, I'm thinking like right there is about good. It's nice evenly right around the zero. And then mid-tones, we can bring down a slight bit as well. For midtones, these are the midtones, this part of the the chart right here. So we want to get that in between right right underneath 50 is where I like to keep my midtones. Um, so we got that. Let's add some saturation. I think that looks really good so far. It's a great, nice, let's make sure our white balance is all set here. Yeah, it looks overall pretty leveled out. So I think the white balance is pretty good. Usually outdoor, if you set it to 5600 or have a sunlight, daylight white balance, it's usually pretty good. It's usually that more of the inside locations is where you need to really fine tune the white balance. But outdoor, I usually don't have to mess with it too much. Um, so let's look at before and after. Before, 
after, before, after. And I think that looks great. Um, it gives me a nice solid base for when we start the next part of this series where we go more in depth into LUTs and curves. Um, so that's with the, so now let's go to a GH5 clip. So as you can see here, I shot this on V-Log. Um, it's a much more flatter profile. It's kind of like S-Log for people that are using Sony or Canon, C-Log if you're using Canon. Um, this just gives you a lot more dynamic range. So as you can see right here, look how much range you have from your highlights to your shadows. You have so much to work with. So we'll go back to here. Look how uh, the drone footage, it just gives you not a lot to work with. So you have to be very careful for pushing stuff too high or too low. Um, but over here on this log footage, it's just, you have so much to work with. So it's for more experienced color graders. Um, so let's just go into here. We're going to have to boost this quite a lot. So let's get our exposure up. We're going to bring that close to 100. And we are going to bring our shadows down close to zero. And our midtones, let's bring those up a tiny bit. We want them to get right around 50. So let's bring our exposure down more. There we go. Bring up our ex Look at all this stuff you have to work with. It's just unbelievable. So before we even do it, let's just, before, look at all the, uh, the information right here. And then when we do this, look at all the information right there. Um, so we also want to bring up our saturation. Pretty much V-Log gives you no saturation, so we need to do all that in post. So we'll bring that up. I like these mountains back here. Um, it's This is taking place in Sedona. So if you don't know what Sedona is, Google it. It's beautiful red rock. So we want to get those up as well. I also want to bring down the contrast more. This was in a shaded area. We'll bring up the midtones more. Bring down the shadows more. And I think that's a great way to start. Once I show you guys what curves do, you guys are going to be blown away. That's kind of, you can literally take every part of the curve and actually do um, what you want with it from each point. You can set as many points as you want. So curves are awesome. I'm going to show you that in the next episode. Um, so this is just a great little start. So let's go back to the beginning. Um, before, after, before, after. It's a huge difference. Um, like I said, LUTs and curves will make it even stand out even more to make it more film-like. This just gives you your basic color correction to start that. So let's work on this shot. So we'll go over here. We will add a color board. Ton of information to work with. Here's another vlog. So we want to go up to 100 and we want to come down to zero. Let's raise the midtones. And once we use curves, this will pop even more. So this is just your basic color correction. Add some saturation. Looking, feel like it's too green, too red. So look at this green overcast, as you can see around here. You can actually tell over by over here. See how much green is in blue? So let's go to the color board. We're going to take our highlights. We're going to up it in the blue area to kind of go up and match. Now how they're all lined up here. So now this is more, so this would be before, after, before, after. It kind of gives it a nice little, so this is also before. So before this has that green yellow tint, so we want to bring up blues to kind of give it an overall good white balance. So there's that kind of shot. <laughs> All right, so we'll do this other stuff later in the more complex, but right now let's go to a natural look. So this is the natural profile on the GH5. Um, I always go back and forth between the natural and the V-Log, just depending on what situation I'm in. Um, so this is 4K natural. We're doing a nice little sit-down interview, have them right in front of the window to get some good daylight, um, turn off all the other lights in the room, and it gives that really good dramatic effect. Um, so as you can tell over here, all this this peaking right here of the highlights is all from this part of his face. Um, so let's raise our midtones here a little bit just so we get some more of his right side of his face. Let's bring down the shadows just a tiny bit. The shadows are pretty much perfect. So we'll bring the midtones up a tiny bit like this. Add some saturation. Let's 
There, and that gives us a nice little base. Um, with these kind of things, I really like to curve this kind of footage um, because it looks so much more cinematic. Um, and I'll show you guys that in the next episode. But let's just do a quick review before, after, before, after. It just gives it a nice, more bright feel, and that way we can curve it and let it up later. Um, and load it up later, rather, um, with LUTs. Um, here's another. This is the bride's interview. Um, it's very bright back here. That's what the peaking is over here. This is all this highlight right here. So if remember, left to right. So all this is pretty much exposed very well, but when he gets over here, it's kind of clipped. Um, so let's go to the exposure. We'll bring this down a slight tad. We'll bring down the shadows a slight tad. We will raise the midtones. Like so add some saturation. I usually don't like adding saturation until we actually do the LUT because LUTs provide saturation. So um, I think in the next part, I'll kind of have the saturation just at the base. And then after we add the LUT, we'll add some saturation if need be. Um, but overall, I kind of like this. The white balance looks pretty good. Um, before, after, before, after. It just gives it a nice little brightness to her face. Um, and for these, I really like to make, the, I usually like having my brides in more of a bright room and kind of my grooms more in a dark. It's kind of like, I don't know. It's like, I like the, the dramatic look for the, for the guys and more of the bright kind of happy look for the girls. So that's a good way. Um, if you guys want to set up your guys' interviews, it's all about composition and all about lighting. And I really like, she was right in front of the window right here. I have the light hitting her perfectly. We closed the, um, the shears on the, the blinds, so we're able to get a nice diffused light. Has It's like perfect contrast um, with the lighting. So as you can tell over here, this is pretty much spot on. I think all we got to really do is raise the highlights a tiny bit. Bring down the shadows just a tiny bit. Add some, a little bit of mid-tones, saturation. And that's a great <laughs> way um, so before, after, before, after, it's going to look really good when we put a nice little LUT on there. Um, so this is more of a darker scene. These are, this wasn't the best reception area, but overall it was a great night. So we were able to work with it. Um, so it's looking like this peak is from this light right here. So that's, the, we don't really care about that. Um, saturation, maybe we can add a little bit of saturation exposure the shadows are perfect maybe some mid-tones just to make it a little bit more bright bring up the highlights a tiny bit maybe the saturation down a tiny bit so yeah there's before after before after so that's another wedding clip so in review um to do a basic color correction i want to go over here i want to open up my color board section i want to add a color board then I want to go up here to view. I want to go down to video scopes. And in review, there's histogram, vector scope, waveform. I always use waveform. I just like it better. And I use RGB parade um, to help kind of show me what my white balance is and my levels. Um, and then over here, you want to add exposure, add midtones, take down shadows. Make sure you keep highlights a little under 100 and keep shadows right at or a little bit over zero. And you want to keep your midtones right here in the 50 area, like the clipping of them. So this high point of the midtone right here, we want to have like around the 50 mark. That's kind of how I grade my wedding films. Um, but yeah, that's just your basic color correction. There's also other stuff. If you So this is RGB parade. There's RGB overlay. There's your reds blues, greens, there's your Luma. A lot of people like Luma as well. I really don't like Luma as much because I like to see kind of how my white balance is. And for that, you can't really see it. Um, so I just use RGB Parade. It's always been really good for me. But this is overall just a basic color correction. This next tutorial I'm gonna do is gonna be more in depth using LUTs, curves, color wheels, hue and saturation curves to really give that film a more cinematic pop and more movie quality film that you guys want to be using for your guys' films, whether it be travel or weddings. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Be on the lookout for another video coming up in the next couple of weeks on the second part of this series where we go more in depth on how to color grade using curves, LUTs, and all that fun stuff. But until next time, I'll see you guys soon. Peace out.